Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we're going to do a little bit of 3D modeling. Yes, we're going to design a comically large pushpin in Tinkercad and then we're going to glue a magnet into it so we can stick notes on metal surfaces. Stick around <laughs> and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to play around a little bit in Tinkercad. I have a small dry erase board which has a steel back to it, or at least I think it does. Magnets stick to it, so that's probably a true statement. Now, occasionally I use these little 8mm diameter, 4mm thick neodymium magnets to hold bits of paper on it, but it's a pain to get them off the board sometimes. You kind of have to hook a fingernail under them and pry them up. Now, a long, long time ago, I thought it would be really funny to pull the pin part out of a push pin and glue a small magnet onto the end of it so I could stick notes on my refrigerator. And while that worked out pretty well, I wanted something bigger that I could glue the magnet into, so I designed this kind of comically large push pin with a space inside where I could glue one of those magnets that I've been using. The magnet fits really well inside here, and I'm just using some thick CA glue to hold it in, but if you want, you could use some hot glue, or if you really have some time to kill, you could use some E6000. That stuff's great, but it takes forever to cure. Oh, and if you don't have any magnets like that, I've got a link in the description to the ones that I'm using on Amazon. So designing this in Tinkercad was really pretty simple, and I'll show you how I did it. Let's switch over to the computer and we'll get into it. My concept for the design was the stereotypical plastic pushpin. The shape consists of a half sphere, two cones, and a flat cylinder. Now, I realize that sounds like a small pile of parts, but like any other Tinkercad project, think of it as a kit that you get to assemble. Before we get into those shapes, though, we need to change the name of this document. This is not an epic crift. This is more of a magnetic tack, a magnet tack, if you will. There. Now we need to make sure we can glue our magnet into the base of the final product. And so to do that, I'm going to make a placeholder part for the magnet. The magnets that I'm using are 8 millimeters in diameter and 4 millimeters thick. If you have other size magnets, you can simply adjust the size of the dimensions of the placeholder to match what you've got available. This placeholder is going to get cut out of the final product, so it needs to be a whole part. And my magnets are cylindrical in shape, so the thing that we need is a cylinder part that's a hole. So let's drag one of those out onto the work plane. Like most parts in Tinkercad, this is a 20 by 20 by 20 millimeter object, so we're going to have to adjust its size. Let's click one of these little square handles down at the base, and that'll get us into where we can edit the size of the object. So we're going to set this base to 8 millimeters by 8 millimeters. Then we'll click the square handle here at the top and set the height to 4 millimeters. And on the inspector panel here, let's set the number of sides to the maximum value of 64 so we get the smoothest cylinder that Tinkercad's basic shapes are capable of. Now there, now I've got a perfect model of the magnet that I'm going to use. Oh, but there's a problem. When we cut this hole out of our final design, the magnet won't actually fit when we print it out. Why? Because when the printer's nozzle traces around that 8mm diameter circle, the nozzle is centered on that line, so half of the nozzle's width is outside the line and half of it is inside. And that means that when we print it, the final diameter is going to be more like 7.6 millimeters. So we're going to need to add a little bit to our magnet model to account for this. Let's click one of the square handles on the base again. And I want to add not only 0.4 millimeters to account for the width of the nozzle, but actually a little extra, because some slicers are configured to print with a slightly larger than 0.4 millimeter extrusion width. By adding 0.6 millimeters, we can ensure that there's just a tiny bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to set the cylinder to have a footprint of 8.6 millimeters by 8.6 millimeters. Oh, and let's add just a tiny extra bit to the height as well to make room for glue. Click the square handle for the height and then set it to 4.5 millimeters. Now when we cut this hole out, the magnet should fit slightly loosely when the model is printed. So with that taken care of, we can turn our attention to the rest of the pushpin parts. 
Let's drag out a couple of more parts and then we can adjust the sizes as we need to. Let's grab a half sphere and a cone. Now, the half sphere is fine just the way it is. Remember, this pushpin model is going to be comically large. Let's take the cone and turn it into the tall, towering part of the pushpin. Let's set the top radius to 4 millimeters and set the base radius to 6 millimeters. Then we'll set the height to 22 millimeters and the number of sides to 64. Now select both the half sphere and the cone and then use the alignment tool. Align them on their centers on the work plane. Then group them together. Okay, now we can work on the top part of the push pin. Let's drag a work plane out and set it on top of what we've got already. That way newly added objects will land at that level. With that work plane in place, let's drag out another cone. And we'll set its top radius to 6 millimeters and its base radius to 4 millimeters. That's the opposite of what we did for the first one, but we'll set the height to 2 millimeters so that it's short. And then we'll set the number of sides to 64 so that it's as smooth as Tinkercad allows. Perfect. Now we're almost done. Let's use that work plane trick again and put a work plane on top of the part that we just made. And now we'll drag out a cylinder. Since the top radius of the cone that we just made is 6 millimeters, that means that its diameter is 12 millimeters. So let's set this cylinder to match. Click one of the square handles at the base and set it to 12 millimeters by 12 millimeters. We'll set its height to one millimeter and we'll set its number of sides to 64. Now let's clear that work plane by dragging out another work plane onto the regular work plane. And now we can line up all of the parts that we made and then group them together. So select all the pieces that we've made, including that magnet hole. Then we can use the alignment tool and align everything centered on the base. And then we'll group them together. And now we have our comically large pushpin model. Let's export this as an STL file and then we can slice and print it. You won't need to use supports when you print this model. The hole for the magnet isn't very big and really pretty much every printer ever made should be able to bridge that gap. One thing that you will want to do though is use at least a little bit of infill. I generally use 10% infill with a gyroid pattern. And the reason for using infill isn't for internal support of the top of the model. It's so you don't accidentally push the magnet through the hole that we designed in the model. I tried printing it without infill and found out the hard way that it really kind of needed it. So with that sliced and sent off to the printer, here is a quick time lapse video. And here it is all printed out, just waiting for a magnet to be glued in. And you can see the magnet fits loosely in the spot that we made for it. So I'm going to use Zappa Gap thick CA glue and just put a big drop down in the spot for the magnet. Then in goes the magnet, and I'll let that sit for a few minutes to cure. Now I can stick things to the side of the fridge, or on my dry erase board. With this oversized pushpin, it's a magnet, it's a tack, it's magnet tack. So that was another fun, easy Tinkercad project. And if you've been hesitant to try doing 3D design in Tinkercad, don't worry, it's super easy. Just like we did here in this video, you drag out basic building blocks, resize them, and group them together to make really cool things. So don't be afraid of it. Tinkercad is free, and you can sign up and create an account at Tinkercad.com. Now we're pretty much at the end of the video, so I hope you had a good time. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on any cool 3D printing stuff. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But either way, please share your thoughts down in the comments. And if you like the content that I'm producing and you want to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the Amazon affiliate link really helps no matter what you're buying, and heck, even just subscribing is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making these videos for you. Well, now that I've got a nice little magnetic pushpin design, I'm going to go pin up a few ideas and print out something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.